Cliffy here from Cliff Dive Into Movies. Just want to say thank you for checking out the uh, channel and checking out this video in particular. And this video is 10 more things I noticed in the original Mad Max. Now this one, the list is 11 through 20. If you want to see 1 through 10, check out the original, the first video, 10 things I noticed in Mad Max. There'll be a link at the end of the video. And now on to number 11. Number 11, kids toys. In the scene where Jess is not grumpy about Max going back to the force, you see their baby, uh, their kid playing in the background. In all the shots of the child in the background, he's playing with stuffed toys and a ball. There's no gun. In the close-up shots showing the kid, the kid has the gun, and it's supposed to be Max's gun. Number 12, Jess's shoes. So in the movie, Jess usually wears one type of shoe. And when Max and Jess are on vacation and they're trying to get away from everything, and just before they've come across the toe cutter, She's got these shoes on when she walks up to Max while he's fixing the car. When she walks around him, she's got some sort of a boot that has like a sheepskin interior. And then when she, the shot of her walking away, she's back to the shoes that she normally wears through the rest of the movie. Number 13, the murder scene. There's quite a few different continuity mistakes in the scene where Jess gets killed. Uh, the first one I'll mention is Jess set is trying to escape from the toll cutter. She's driving the car and it stalls out because when they crash through the gate, a piece of the gate ended up in the radiator and it causes the, the fluid to run out so the car stalls. Except that when Max runs by the car later on, that piece of uh, gate isn't there anymore. One of the iconic shots of the movie is when Toe Cutter runs over Jess and Sprague. You see her shoe go flying and Sprague's ball goes flying. What's interesting is that when they're in the car with May, sometimes May has a ball in her hand. And sometimes she doesn't. And then when Jess and Sprague get out of the car, Sprague doesn't look like he has a ball in his hand. The other thing I noticed about this thing is Jess's shoe that goes flying is not the style of shoe that she was seen wearing immediately before this or has been wearing through the entire movie. Number 14, Jess's injury. So after Toe Cutter runs over Jess, the doctors mention all the different body parts that have been damaged. Her spleen, her liver, lungs, chest femur she's got uh, renal failure what they don't mention and what you can just barely see is one that she's lost her right arm and then it also looks like she's lost her left foot too number 15 code three so max decides to steal the v8 interceptor and get revenge on toe cutter while he's driving around you hear over the radio system the dispatcher saying that there's a code three possible unauthorized use by an MFP officer. Code 3 was also the same code that they were using on the Night Rider. So it must be some either just a general car stolen or an MFP car has been stolen. Number 16, Max and Toe Cutter. So Max has started to get revenge on Toe Cutter and his gang by wiping out most of the gang members. At a certain point, it's just Toe Cutter, Bubba, and Johnny are the only ones left. Max puts photos of Goose, Jess, and Sprague in Toe Cutter's helmet so that Toe Cutter will know why this is being done. What's interesting is that Toe Cutter doesn't know Max, and as far as Toe Cutter's concerned, Goose was just an MFP officer that they were killing because he roughed up Johnny. Jess and the baby was just a random woman that he accosted, and she hit him in the balls, and he decided to kill her. He isn't even aware of Max. And it's funny that they don't even talk to each other, which is unusual for a revenge movie of where the good guy and the bad guy never actually talk. And in fact, usually the bad guy is attacking people that the good guy knows. In this case, Max is an unknown common denominator that Toe Cutter's not even aware of. Number 17, Bubba and Guns. Only two members of Toe Cutter's gang has guns. Toe Cutter himself has a rifle, and Bubba has a German Mauser and an American Smith & Weston. Johnny uses a gun once, but he takes it away from Toe Cutter, so that doesn't count. I know around the world, Americans have a um, reputation for loving their guns, and I find it interesting that the single person in two Toe Cutter's gang that has a gun is a guy who's named Bubba, which is traditionally a Southern American name. Number 18, ropes. Toe Cutter and Bubba set up a trap using Johnny as bait to catch Max. It works, and Bubba shoots Max in the leg. When Bubba goes to get closer to Max and he's riding his motorcycle, Max is able to grab his gun and shoots, and he hits and kills Bubba. When Bubba flies off of his motorcycle, you can see the ropes that are used to pull him off of the bike. 19, 
This is my truck. When Max is chasing after Toe Cutter at the end of the movie, Toe Cutter ends up slamming into a semi truck. When the semi truck is coming towards Max and Toe Cutter, from that point of view, it's it's normal looking. But you can tell when the motorcycle hits the semi truck that a plate has been added to the front of the truck. And you can really tell from the side. It's painted very well, but you can tell on the side that the extra plate is there, probably not to damage the truck from running over the motorcycle. Number 20, Mad Max and the Knight Rider. So Mad Max, the movie starts off with the Knight Rider, who's a member of Toe Cutter's motorcycle gang, has stolen a black interceptor, causes a whole bunch of destruction, and then dies. Max later on tells his wife that he needs to quit because he's worried about being co- becoming as cold-blooded and cold-hearted as the bad guys that he's going after every day. Through the course of the movie, Max's wife, kid, and best friend get killed. So Max steals a black interceptor, forces some people off the road, shoots somebody, makes another person slam into a semi-truck, and sets another person on fire. So at the end of the movie, he has become just as bad as any member of Toe Cutter's gang. And one of the things I like is the end shot at the end when Max is driving away from setting Johnny the boy on fire, and he just has a completely dead look on on his face he is completely dead inside and is now is just some sort of road warrior which is convenient because that's what he's going to be called in the next movie and that's 10 more things i noticed in man max i hope you liked this video i liked making it if you haven't seen the first one which is simply called 10 things i noticed in man max that covers numbers 1 through 10 the link is on screen press it and watch that and i hope you enjoy it too my name's cliffy thanks for coming to the channel Thanks for watching this video and come again.